From WJCT Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm Ray Hollister. I'm Amber Hollister. And this is Deemable Tech, tech help worth listening to. This week's episode of the Deemable Tech podcast is brought to you by A Small Orange Homegrown Hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. So as you can tell, Tom is out of the studio today, so we are joined today by my wife, Amber Hollister. Thanks for being here, Amber. (laughs) Does it feel weird being in here instead of at home watching the show on the website? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Okay, cool. (laughs) Well, thanks for coming in. Um, We got some stuff that you are going to be really interested in. I know. That's why I brought you with us. (laughs) So uh, she was coming anyways, uh, but since Tom is out, she is going to fill his rather large shoes. Yep. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So if you have a question for us, give us a call. Uh, at 1-888-972-9868, or you can send us an email at questions at deemable.com. Well, as you might remember, we were doing a contest to win a $50 Amazon gift card, and the time is now to announce the winner. Nobody. (laughs) Yeah, uh, that's right. Unfortunately, a lot of people did like us on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the show on iTunes and YouTube just like they were supposed to do. So uh, that's great. Thank you so much. A lot of people liked us and followed us, but not a single person emailed us at giftcard at deemable.com to enter the contest, except for that one guy that sent us some spam. So <laughs> that contest was a complete and total epic fail. But we've learned from the experience and we are starting a new Amazon gift card contest giveaway that is much easier to enter. All you have to do is answer a few questions about the Deemable Tech podcast. And don't worry, it's not a trivia contest. You don't have to answer any crazy questions. We just need your opinion on the, a few questions about the show. So if you could, take a few minutes and enter the, the con, enter the survey, and it would really help us out a lot. And just for doing so, you'll be entered to win a $20 Amazon gift card. So all you have to do is go to deemable.com and click the link to take the survey. And it's real easy to find. You can't miss it. It's going to be either the first or second article at the top of the webpage every day until the contest is over. Uh, Speaking of which, it ends September 30th. So don't wait. Go submit your survey right now unless you're watching this live and then wait till the show's over and, you know, do it after the show. (laughs) So, all right, now on to the show. So, Amber, you remember the 90s, right? Sure. Uh, It started with the end of the Cold War and the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, They were playing alternative grunge and ska on the radio. Mm -hmm. Um, Dolly the Sheep was the first cloned animal. (laughs) There was the Iraq War, the Lewinsky scandal, the ramp up to the fear of the Y2K bug. Wow. And, of course, that was the decade when Al Gore invented the Internet. Wow, that was a really in-depth description. I just looked on Wikipedia. Ah, okay. Well, I asked because, you know, remember back in the old days of the information superhighway, you know, the internet was going to change how we did everything. You know, they were they were predicting it was going to just completely change the world. Back then they predicted that by now, like 2013, we'd be doing all of our shopping on the internet. Brick and mortar stores would completely be relics of the past. And we'd buy everything online, all of our electronics, all of our clothes, all of our groceries, everything would be bought online. And, you know, yeah, I buy electronics online. Uh, I say I buy quite a bit of stuff online now. Uh, But I've never bought a single piece of clothing online. Have you, Amber? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm a girl. Oh, okay. I just, I can't bring myself to buy clothing online. I don't get that. Especially kids' clothes. And you'd think for a guy that'd be even easier because we don't care as long as it fits. Mm -hmm. But I just can't bring myself to buy clothing online. I've never understood that. Well, obviously, and obviously the internet has turned out a lot differently than they predicted. Uh, Brick and mortar stores are still doing just fine. Um, But there's one thing that you can do online that they did predict completely right. And that is buying your food online. Now, I'm not talking about going going to the grocery store and buying your groceries online. Uh, Although there are services that will do that for you. They'll buy it and bring it to you. And you can even buy groceries on Amazon. I just found that out last night. Um, But what I'm talking about is delicious, ready-to-cook meals delivered to your door. So a little over a month ago, I found out about this website that's here in Jacksonville called PrepChefs.com. And the website looked fantastic, so we decided to check it out. And Amber and I have been using the service for about a month now, Mm -hmm. and we have loved it. 
So I invited the owner, Brian D'Alexandris, to join us here in the studio to tell us more about it. So thanks for joining us, Brian. Thanks for having me. Um, and also, like I was saying before, I, I wanted Amber to come too because she knows more about cooking these days than I do. Um, so that's why I enjoy, invited her to join us in the studio to tell us about her experience. Well, I'm happy to be here to talk about it. So Brian, uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started with PrepChefs.com. Um, well, about I've been in it about seven years, okay. and um, we originally got into it. it uh, I got into a franchise, uh, oh. and... I thought it was an interesting idea. I knew it wasn't complete, and we got into it, and we spent a long time with the customers and figuring out what it was about, and then we realized quickly that um, that model was not going to work, okay. and uh, we never really got out of that model. And, in and that was a franchise model. That was a franchise okay. model. Um, and then in 2010, we uh, launched Prep Chefs, and okay. so I've been uh, been in charge of that ever since. So. Uh being having a lot of experience in the restaurant industry, I know what a prep chef is. Is that where you got that concept from? Did you have restaurant experience? I did not have restaurant okay. experience. Um, I got exposed to food with the franchise, and uh, prep chefs came because I was searching for a domain, and <laughs> that that was one that was available. And I said, "What a great fit!" So, no, it's prep chefs with an S at the end. Correct. Yeah. Uh, you don't have prepchef.com. I don't have okay. prepchef.com. So definitely prepchefs.com. Correct. Um, for those, uh, f just to explain what a prep chef does, um, in a, typically in the, the upper scale restaurants, your prep chef is the one that cuts your veggies and, and prepares everything so that all the executive chef or the sous chef has to do is pop it in the oven or throw it on the skillet and it's ready to go. The executive chef does, comes up with the recipe and tells the prep chef what to do, but basically they're just the the, the labor. They're the worker. They're the, the, wor the workers who they know how to cook. They know how to cook well, and they also fortunately know how to follow directions. <laughs> so it's uh, one of the lower end jobs, but it gives it makes the the job of the executive chef or the sous chef much easier. Exactly. So that all they have to do is do the final touches and get it prepared. And that's what's so great about prep chefs is you deliver the food; it's ready to go. I don't have to do a bunch of work to it. I just stick it in the oven. Yeah, it goes. <laughs> our chef spent a lot of time getting the uh, uh, getting all the ingredients and the recipes all prepared. So um, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for the customer at the end. I mean, they have a busy day, uh, and so we just want them to be able to pop it in the oven. Yeah, that's great. Now, Amber, you've been doing most of the cooking at our house. How has it made you feel and your experience with it? Well, um, I mean. It's definitely given me a lot of uh, freedom. Yeah. <laughs> um, I feel like um, it, it gives me a lot of flexibility in my day. Yeah. Um, I can take our daughter, Zoe, to activities late in the day or go on some sort of last minute all day outing. And I don't have to do any planning. And I know that there will be a really delicious home cooked meal on the table at six o'clock when you walk in the door from work <laughs> every single really night. I do really appreciate that. And that's that's, that's really, really nice. big uh, peace of mind for me. Yeah. Um, one thing that you mentioned to me a couple of times was that even though it, it you, because you automatically have something ready that you can do any night of the week, it, it's made it feel less pressure if you want to do something from scratch too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, it, it kind of is um, inspiring, I guess, um, yeah. because I get really easily overwhelmed by too many choices. And so <laughs> there are so many recipes to try and ingredients to decide on when you're like cooking from scratch all sure. the time. And that I would end up making the same things over and over again. Right. <laughs> and so now with most meals kind of already taken care of, it really, I feel like it freed up brain power and creativity to try some new things. And when I do cook, it feels fun instead of like drudgery. <laughs> yeah. So kind of a nice side benefit of it. Um, now, like we were saying before the show, for us, when we saw the, when we found out about you guys, we expected it was going to be to replace what we were eating out. Because we were eating out more than we wanted to be. Because it was often, you know, things would get crazy, like with Girl Scouts or ballet, and she'd be out, and I was busy all day at work. And, you know, we just, we got home at 6 o'clock, and we're like, ugh, we don't want to cook. And it's really not that we didn't want to cook. We just didn't want to prepare stuff. Right. So to have that available to us um, was really great. 
And we figured that would help our budget because it was a little bit less expensive than going out to eat. But then we started realizing it was actually better than it, we were saving money on our grocery bill. Mm-hmm. That was really incredible. Well, there's two things. One, you know, it's it's pretty efficient to go to the grocery store if you're going to make the same thing all the time right. because you can use up what you have left over. When you're trying new things, yeah. as you know, <laughs> when you have a new recipe, you go to the grocery store and you buy, you know, 25 different ingredients. And unless sure. you walk out and all of a sudden you're like, I just spent $60 on mm-hmm. this thing. And uh, you don't know whether it's going to work out or not work out. Um, so it is. It's it's more efficient uh, when you don't have waste, too, um, because a lot of times, unfortunately, we all throw stuff out uh, often. And it's... Yeah. Um, it's not because we don't want to use it. It's just because it's just the stuff ends up going bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know that, um, you know, especially if you take into consideration the value of my time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it really does uh, come in under what we'd be paying. Oh, yeah. Because there's so much time that you have to spend preparing it to get ready for actually just doing the cooking. Mm-hmm. Not even take into account uh, cleanup afterwards. Because most a, of the yeah. stuff that you have, it comes in a tray, and you just pop the tray in the oven, and you're good to go. Yeah, nothing. There's nothing to clean up except yeah. the the plates that you you're having on <laughs> yourself. So if you're right. paper plates, you have nothing. But if <laughs> <laughs> so, we've tried almost every single thing you make. Um, <laughs> we we've really enjoyed almost everything. Um, some of our favorites was the mom's marvelous Angus meatloaf. That was the first thing we tried, and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, something about that, it, the texture is what's really incredible about that. Because meatloaf is often you just you bite into it, and you just, your teeth just kind of sink into it like bread. But it's, it's a, there's a substantial texture to it. It's tender, but it's like you're actually biting into something. And it's so amazing on that. Uh, really flavorful. You could really tell it was good meat and really quality meat. Um, and it actually, it reminded me of Ted's Montana Grill. I mean, their meatloaf at Ted's Montana Grill is really amazing, especially the the bison meatloaf. Mm-hmm. And I was I was shocked at how how great it was. Yeah, yeah, especially for the price. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Actually, one thing we're gonna do at some point, we wanted to do it uh, before the show, is uh, we have some friends, uh, Robert Snyder and and his wife Joelle, uh, we play Bang, uh, a card game. And it's a, an Old West-style game, which actually we're going to talk about later in the show, uh, mm-hmm. an app related to it. But uh, we wanted to invite them over and and Robert or, uh, and Sean and Tom to have a night playing bang and just meatloaf and mashed potatoes <laughs> every way. Because <laughs> it, it, it makes it easy to, to do parties like that, too. It does. Yeah, we have a lot of people that use this for a lot of different reasons. One is um, uh, when they have guests over, they have a, just a difficult night with the kid, like you had mentioned, yeah. uh, with the kids. You have uh, you take them to something that, that you know, winds up going late, um, you know, when there's not everyone's getting together to eat at the same time or you're just tired or exhausted. But we sure. also do gifts. You know, we do a lot of people are out of the hospital or they're yeah. young babies, right? So you're expecting a, a baby and it's, you know, those first months are are miserable and um so any time that anyone needs an extra hand in the kitchen which i i mean for most everyone i know it's you know it's just a constant thing but um it does work for a lot of different different people yeah and and you do, you do have a good amount of variety we were talking about the show if you do it sure. every single day there's about 30 things on mm-hmm. the item right now yeah so yeah you're gonna end up repeating right but how often do you guys change out the menu um, we don't have uh, we don't have a sort of system at every time we change out the menu, but we do yeah. try to do it uh, seasonally. So you'll and we try to do it a couple times a month. So we sort of had a lull in the summer time, but now yeah. that it's uh, the fall, we'll be we'll be changing out a significant portion of our menu, probably a, a, you know a quarter of it, okay, if not yeah. more. Good to know. Uh, let's see what other questions do we have for them, Amber? You remember? What do you? What was the question that you had? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I think my main question was really what you just asked about oh, okay. the, the about menu changing, changing the menu. out. Yeah, because it didn't change a whole lot while we were trying it. Okay, which was great because then we really got to try everything that was there. <laughs> but um, but I yeah, that was my main question. Now, one thing that we were surprised is there's not many veggies. Uh, it's mostly starches and and proteins. Right. Um, we're going to add more veggies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
we definitely need to need to do that. Yeah, uh, we took it away for a while, but then we we discovered that um, the customers did not like us taking it away. So really? We're put them back okay. On the you know, at first when I I saw it, I w- I've always wondered why fast food joints don't have some sort of vegetable option. And then the reality is they just don't sell. They don't right. sell as well. Right. Um, and, but for us, it actually worked out really great because we can go once a week to the grocery store, grab some steam fresh or you know public steam microwave bags because yeah. we like our vegetables plain. We, we really we, do. We don't we might like put a to little have bit a lot of salt on them. You know, veggie casseroles yeah. or anything like that. Like, and that's one of the yeah. That's one of the challenges we yeah. face. So there's a lot of people with a lot of different tastes and a lot sure. of different mm-hmm. diets and and um, and so you know it's just been a long time in figuring out what sort of is the most popular. Yeah. Yeah. Makes well, sense. the no veggie thing really actually worked well for us. Yeah. It, you know, because I'd rather like steam some asparagus real quick, you know, or something like that than have something that's like prepared and has yeah. a bunch of stuff in it or whatever. Now, um, kind of going away from the food, but more to the business side of things. Sure. Um, w- the one thing that really stood out to me when we first were checking you guys out was your website. It looks incredibly sharp. It, it's very professional. Um, look, looks, I mean, as a matter of fact, I didn't believe at first that you were a Jacksonville company. No offense to, <laughs> to other companies in Jacksonville, but it didn't seem like a local thing. It looked like a franchise. Um, so congrats on that. It looks fantastic. Thank you. I'll um, pass I w- that on. I was really impressed, too, at how mobile ready it was. Because um, yeah. at first we pulled it up on my Chromebook and I was like, oh, that's cool. But I brought it up on my iPhone. I was like, oh, my gosh, it's formatted for my iPhone. Mm-hmm. That's so incredible. And it's really easy to use. That was really impressive. Um, so you don't develop it yourself. No, I, I just, um, I knew what I wanted. So this is my third website. Okay. And I was able to go search uh, a little bit more aggressive in my search and online find a bunch of different uh, people that developed websites and um, settled on a, a guy and told him all the different things that I needed. And one of them was the, the mobile version. Sure. We needed to have all these different aspects and I knew how it had to flow. And, um, and he was able to create it for me. And yeah. it was brilliant because I don't know all that much about it. I just, I know what I, what I want for my customers. I know yeah. what they want because they've told me. So, uh, it was a long process, but, um, yeah, it was great. Well, you really did a good job taking advantage of the technology that's available. Yeah. yeah I was really impressed with that because, Often, when you're talking about business on the scale of yours, the website is one of the last things that they think about, even if it, they're a web-centered company. <laughs> and um, I was really impressed. It The checkout feels so secure and legitimate. I, that was the only thing I could think of to say. It just felt legitimate. And even though I had no knowledge of who you guys were uh, and had never heard of you before, I felt comfortable and secure putting in my credit card information to, to make that first transaction with you guys. Yeah. the um, uh, To me, I'm so happy with these other companies that are coming out and creating these incredible carts and, and just all of these uh, uh, great package things that you literally can – it's not quite plug and play. There's yeah. a lot of customization to it, but um, they have done a remarkable job. Yeah. And, and it's, um, Can you say it's who, who uh, developed it for you? Uh, who developed it for me? Um, gosh, caught me off guard. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Cause I don't use them that much uh, yeah. anymore, but, um, no, I oh, can't. Okay. But Pinnacle cart is the, oh, Pinnacle the cart, cart. Yeah. is the cart system we use. Okay. The shopping cart system. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, let's see. Now, one thing we talked a little bit about this before the show, um, of going back to the food end of things. Yeah. Um, most of your entrees come with starches. Mm-hmm. Um, they come with like a rice or a, a mashed potatoes or sort of thing. Or pasta. But some of them don't. Mm-hmm. And, and what was the, the reasoning behind that? Well, we're just sort of in a state of flux listening to our customers trying to figure out exactly what the most popular diet it is, what people are looking for. So we've done a lot of um, experimenting to find out what sells and what doesn't sell and just a lot of talking to customers. And so um, right now we are in the shift of going from where it's just the protein we're going to put aside to all those things so that we'll have a a protein inside every one of the dinners. Okay. Very cool. Um, Amber, I wanted to ask you, what was your favorite meal of all of them? Oh, my favorite meal? Um, I'm going to say probably the meatloaf. The meatloaf, yeah. yeah I really did. That like was it. that was definitely my favorite at first. Um, but my absolute favorite of all, which shocked me beyond anything, was the uh, the basil pork chops. Those were I, I literally yelled out 
what did I say? The, this is the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. Like, <laughs> the moment I put it, it the, the flavor is so intense and it's just sweet enough and just loaded with, and I, 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 I had low expectations for the, the pork chops because uh, most of the time I hate pork chops. And, uh, but I figured, you know, we're going to try them, see what they're like. And the breaded pork chops were okay. They were, they were good. I mean, they're definitely juicy and tender. No, that's what I love the. Really? No, I do. Yeah. And, and they were good. But man, the basil pork chops, those were absolutely incredible. Yeah. I, um, it was funny because I hate pork and I avoid pork. Like, yeah. I hate it. And um, every time that we had uh, pork from Prep Chefs, I loved it. Yeah. It was. It was like you guys single handedly converted me into. <laughs> Liking pork. It was um, crazy. The cool thing, what we get to do that you can't do at home is do a lot of marinades, a lot yeah. of seasoning, and it's, the stuff takes a lot of time. Sure. And you, no one, you know, not many people have a, you know, a whole shelf full of spices <laughs> and they even know what to do with them. Let, and then yeah. marinades and stuff like that. So we're able to do 24 hour marinades and, and do that kind of stuff so that the flavor does pop when you eat it. Yeah. That was one thing we had the, um, the Mediterranean chicken last night. And the flavor on that was insane. It was so, it was really good. so bold. And, and it, even when there was, I, I took everything off the top of it and it was just eating the meat. And I could taste all the flavors throughout the meat. It was incredible. That was really awesome. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the, how it works. Sure. You go to the site, uh, you look through the menu, you pick out the things that you like, you add it to your shopping cart. Now there's a minimum. You have to, how much is it? There's a $60 minimum. Yeah. So you can't just buy one meal. You got <laughs> right, which gets you about. I mean, Amber, you can speak to this. Uh, it gets about five to seven dinners yeah. Uh, yeah. that all serve. They have two servings in each one of the dinners, and a lot of those uh, they're they're two servings, but they're ample servings. Right, they really and most are. Most of them are, are really like we've been splitting most of them with the three of us: me, her, and our seven year old daughter. Yeah. Um, and that might be le- not enough for some folks, but yeah, it works no, I'm really a six great for foot. us. Yeah. You know, hundred, you know, two hundred pound guy, yeah. and it's my sort of a serving. It's not crazy, but yeah. it's it's. I tried to make it not the government right recommended yeah. serving. <laughs> and we we've been trying to cut back, so that's probably you know why for us it's two Extended. servings is perfect for the three of us. Right. Yeah. But we also supplement it usually with a vegetable. We add a vegetable to it, and that works out great for us. Um, but for some folks, if you got a family of four. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need to grab two of them. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, you purchase them, and then how long does it take usually to get out? It's the next day. So uh, if you order the one day, it's, it'll arrive on your doorstep the next day unless you tell us differently. Okay. And you right now you only serve the Jacksonville area. That's right. Right. That's right. And do you go out into Nassau or Clay County or St. John's? We do. Let's see. We serve St. Augustine. Uh, it's pretty much the Jackson, Jacksonville metro area. And um, we even go up to Fern- Florida. Yeah, we even go up to Fernandina Beach. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's a good drive. It is a good drive. I used to live on the north end of Fernandina and go to school in the south side, so <laughs> I know that drive all too well. Um, okay, and the the thing that was confusing to me is, you know, a lot of people. Um, Amber does stay at home. She's a stay at home mom, mm-hmm. um, but most folks, both parents, work. So how did you figure out how to make these deliveries happen? Without you know people coming home and finding melted food on their on their <laughs> doorstep. <laughs> yeah, that was. Um, it took a while to figure that out, but what we settled on is we found some shippers that uh, that ship fresh live seafood uh, around the country, and so we looked into how they did that and found uh, a company that makes insulation that goes inside of regular you know cardboard boxes that you'd find from Amazon on your doorstep, mm-hmm. and um, and so we just deliver those uh, with some gel packs in it and drop it off at your front door and people just pull the dinners out whenever they get home they'll stay frozen there for yeah. twenty four hours. Um, because yeah, originally when I first thought I was like you're gonna drop off an igloo cooler, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna look like we have a, a transplant organ <laughs> sitting in our front steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we purposely, um, you know, thought about that because we had a yeah. couple customers, you know, who live in different areas and they were worried about their box being sure. stolen off their front porch. And yeah. I said, it's, we just make it a plain white box, so yep. it's not, uh, yeah, it's not nice. I- easily identifiable. So that you, there's food in there. There's a uh, this thing you put on the because you don't seal the box. Boxes, uh, <laughs> right. clothes. There's this thing you put on them. Right. Where did that come from? What is that? Yeah, like I just thing. Uh, well, neat. after experimenting with closing, you know, you normally you close a box with with tape. Right. And of course, if you rip the tape off, the box is completely destroyed. So, right. I was looking in online trying to find something that would seal a box without actually ruining the box, and uh-huh. I came across 
what I call is a plastic gizmo. <laughs> and, you know, I actually name it that on yeah. the little sheet. And you, it slides across both flaps and, and keeps it, seals it, it shut. And it seals it shut. And, um, and, you know, I give a lot of my, all my customers credit. They most part just do figure it, direct, it out and figure it out, it out, slide it right over. So we get to, uh, we get to actually reuse the box. It's one of those perfect little gadgets that like you look at it and you've never seen it before. And the only way to describe it, it's like two pieces of plastic with a ridge down the middle. Yep. And it just slides right through on the, the two Perfect. top lids and closes them together. Yeah, from one edge to the other. And you look at it and you go, oh, I know how to work that. And you slide it off. It's just perfect. Right. But if you saw it away from a box, you would have what absolutely no that? idea. Yeah. That oh that my gosh. It, looks, it does look really classy because you got your logo on it. Mm -hmm. And so you see it and you're like, oh, there's our prep chefs. Awesome. <laughs> well, what I like about it, is it too is it's just it's different. right? Yeah. And we are a different kind of a company. Sure. Um, we do a unique thing and um, and sort of it's our little... Uh, mark that, yeah. you know we thought through you know even the packaging so and in the boxes they seem like they're pretty waterproof i mean they, i don't think they'd withstand a hurricane but <laughs> right. they, they're going to withstand if there's a little bit of rain it's going to be okay um and that's really great because again so many people yeah, try and i can imagine if you tried to deliver when everyone was there You'd be spending a lot of time in rush hour traffic <laughs> every night which we did we did for, <laughs> a, year, for a couple of years wow that, that that's rough oh uh, let's see you, you were about to jump in? Oh, okay. No. Nope. All right. <laughs> um, there was another question I had for you. So what have been your biggest challenges with, with running Prep Chef and, and getting it going and, and growing it? Um, it's just, well, I mean, there's several things, right? The economy. Um, it's, it's not knowing another business model to copy, right? We're yeah. unique. And so every decision I've made, I'm constantly wrestling with whether it's the right one, you know, right direction to go in because I hate to go in a wrong direction and then have to back up because every time you do that, it, it costs a lot of money. Sure. So um, that's why we've been doing it. I've been doing it for so long and we're only to the stage where we're at right now. It's just we've, we've given a lot of time and thought. So the biggest challenge is just the wrestling with um, you know, what options are available to us going forward and, and then which, which one do we choose? Okay. Well, the, the fact that you um, are putting a lot of effort at, into detail really shows up, like the attention to detail, like in the process of ordering and getting the food and yeah. everything. It just, it works really well. It's very smooth. Yeah, thank you. I think I ask everybody who, who's on our show that does, has any sort of business, so do you plan on making an app? <laughs> You know, um, that's a question probably I would ask you. <laughs> Should we make an app? I don't know um, enough. You know, we have the mobile website. Yeah, and it's um, great. It's, it's and very sharp. So I'm sort of wondering what are the advantages of having an app if you have a mobile website? Um, if people are turning off the push notifications and the other yeah. kind of a stuff, you know, how do you, how do you get them to... Um, you know, to use it, you know, would it be beneficial for us? Is it cost effective for us to do? So, yeah, I mean, with us, um, we, we had our, we did a Kickstarter to, to fund an app uh, a while back. We went with a super cheap uh, app uh, platform that works off of our website and pulls that data in. Um, and you know, really, it's just a push of notifications. That's the biggest benefit to it. Um, so people get those notifications when we post a new episode or whatever. Um, it can get really super expensive. You can ta be talking about into the tens of thousands of dollars for an app, a good app. Wow. Um, but your mobile site is really so sharp. There's something called a wrapper app where basically they take the website and they just give you an icon and you upload it to the app store and people can download it. So there's a little bit of mind share there that you, you know, people download the app and they're kind of buying into Prep Chefs and, you know, they're thinking as a customer like they're a member of something. Um, so it all depends on what you can get for the price. Um, your y'all's website ooh, just got my southern out there with the y'all. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used the word y'all on this show. Y'all, wow! It, it flowed right. You guys, <laughs> you're gonna appeal to our, our northern listeners. Um, but uh, your your mobile site is so sharp and so good. And of course, you can't really use you, you can't even use your app offline because to make purchases, you know, you need that. Um, so I don't know. It's it's one of those things where it's kind of depends on what you can get. It does help with Mindshare, though. Can you check out in an app? Mm -hmm. Can you have somebody sign in once, put their credit card information? On, is it secure enough that they can just place their order and hit checkout without having to do? That's what Where, I'd you be would interested do like in. One click that would checkout. be that would be a significant advantage over the mobile that website. That could. That would make sense. Yeah, that would be one. That would be one uh, definite benefit that would help you guys out. So. 
Um, I do know a few app developers. I'll 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 give you their information. Great. Um, send you that. So, um, where do you see Prep Chefs going from here? I mean, right now you're in Northeast Florida. Uh, are you looking just right now to just get more exposure, more people know about you? Um, or yeah. are you at that place where you're starting to think beyond that? Um, no, we, we still need a lot of uh, penetration inside of Jacksonville. I think we've got a long way to go. You asked what our biggest challenge was, and now that you just mentioned that, <laughs> our biggest challenge is getting the word out, letting sure. people know we exist. Most people have no idea a service like ours exists. Um, so that really is our biggest challenge. Um, uh, for us going forward. But, I mean, as far as going forward after uh, our growth, um, I don't know. I wrestle with that. I, I just don't know where we're going to be. We have to see what we uh, have in Jacksonville and how we can grow it well in Jacksonville and yeah. then see you know, how we can scale it after that. Well, I'll be honest. I have a personal interest in you guys being <laughs> hugely successful because, I mean, there was one time, one time where it was just a, a mistake on our part. We didn't put our order in. And we there was one day where we ran out of food, and we we were depressed. Like we <laughs> we are so addicted. We were just like, oh God, what are we gonna do? Now we and have to eat out. We're oh. gonna have to go out. <laughs> this is horrible. What are we gonna do? So I, I do have a personal vetted interest <laughs> in you guys being hey, listen, very successful. That. That's great to hear. <laughs> so you guys are on Facebook. Uh, yes. It's is it Facebook dot com slash prep chefs? slash prep chefs. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Are yeah. you on Twitter? Uh we are, but we don't utilize it very well. Okay. We still have a long way to go with Facebook, frankly. And you have a phone number. Like people can call you. We do or text the, the number. Oh, okay. And that will get to you or to somebody who answers the phones for you? Most of the time it'll get to me. Okay. And can people order on the phone with you? I I tr if they're having technical problems, sure. I try to walk them through and get okay. it out. But as far as taking phone orders, yeah. we really we get everybody online. I make yeah. my wife go online. Yeah, work. I mean it's that's the easiest way to do it. Well, it's super... it just makes us efficient, right? Yeah. It keeps the price of the product down. Sure. So that's where we're that's where we're headed. If you got to hire people to answer the phone and take orders, uh, okay. that's that jacks the price up. It does. Yeah. It and does. there's really no reason not to order online because it is a very easy it's process. Very super easy. Yeah. So it's prepchefs.com. Um, also, if you go to prepchefs.com, there is a link there to where you can win a week of dinners. Oh, yeah. So check that out uh, for our listeners. Go to prepchefs.com. Very popular. And uh, sign up for that. And check out their service. It is really incredible. Like I said, uh, we have been using it for a month, and we are completely addicted. We love it. And uh, Brian, thanks for coming on the show. I, I really appreciate you reaching out to me and having me Absolutely. on. Absolutely. All right, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, we have some news about the iPhone 5S and the 5C, and we have a question. You're listening to Dean Will Tech.
Welcome back to Demon Will Tech. I'm Ray Hollister, joined by my acting co-host, Amber Hollister. <laughs> so this week, uh, if you've been hiding under a rock, there was a huge announcement. Well, arguably huge announcement. The big Apple announcement happened this past week. Um, and there were tons of rumors leading up to it. And uh, most of the rumors turned out to be true, didn't they, Amber? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, and you don't follow tech news as much as I do, but I mean, you pretty much knew everything that was going to happen before it happened, right? Yeah. Was yeah, there anything that surprised so. you at all? Uh, okay, I didn't, um, I hadn't heard anything about like camera specs. Okay. So. Um, oh, and we jumped ahead. Of course, uh, the Apple announcement was the new iPhone 5S and the 5C, which that was something new. It was the first year that they've ever announced two iPhones at the same time. Um, every other year. What normally happens, and we've talked about this on the show, is that Apple takes the current generation iPhone and bumps it back a generation, and it's usually $99. And then they take the one year back, and they turn that into the free model that you can get for free on a two-year contract. But they did things different this year. They released, they got rid of the iPhone 5 completely. You can't buy the iPhone 5 anymore. The iPhone 4S, the one that I have, it became the free model. And then they announced this iPhone 5C, which had been predicted to be the cheap uh, model for uh, uh, third world countries sort of thing, uh, uh, evolving markets, growing markets. Um, but it turned out that it's not the cheap model. It runs for $99 and for $199 for the 32 gig, 16 gig and 32 gig. Mm -hmm. And it's full of colors, tons of colors, all pretty colors. What's it come in? White, lime. Uh, and a uh, pink, and I think some uh, blue color, and uh, they come with really interesting silicone oh, and cases. Yellow. Oh, and yellow, yes, yes. And uh, they come with these silicone cases uh, that look they they've been compared to Daleks from Doctor Who, <laughs> and uh, Connect Four. 
So um, kind of goofy. But you, well, that's only with the extra case on top. Yeah, that you don't have to have like a that. case. Yeah. So what did you think about the iPhone 5C? We'll start with that one. I liked it. You I didn't did? want to, right? Because ahead of time, of course, all the rumors are that's going to be the cheap one and blah, blah, blah. And right. so, um, you know, I, I thought I wouldn't like it. But then when they announced it, I was like, that's really fun. And it's kind of I really like the colors. <laughs> and I don't know. It was it was fun to me that, that it had a plastic case, even though really? I know that's cheaper and everything. It just... Now, you used to have the pre-Pixie, which uh, the pre the Palm Pre was one of the cheapestly built phones ever made, but the pre-Pixie made it look like top of the end BMW. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm surprised that you would trust anything with a plastic case. Yeah, but it's from Apple, so I kind of, you know, I, I give them the benefit of the doubt. I've had good experience with their products. Yeah. Now, the um, the iPhone 5C has pretty much the same specs as the iPhone 5. It's it's pretty much exactly the same phone, um, other than the fact that it has a plastic case. So I'm assuming it's cheaper for them to make. And I figured, when me and Tom talked about this, that what was going to happen is Apple was going to release the 5C, and that was going to replace the iPhone 4S. But they didn't. They kept the iPhone 4S with the smaller screen size, and they added this 5C and replaced the 5 with it. But, you know, they're all world phones now. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. I, oh. was, I was reading that on the on the Apple website. That oh, they are all that makes so much phones. more sense. So they sense. got rid of the one that's not. That makes a lot more sense. And that was one thing the, that differentiated the 4S from the 5 was it was the only world phone that I, iPhone made. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. That really makes sense then. Thank you so much. That uh, I, This whole time I've been wondering why did they get rid of the 5 and keep the 4S? But now they're all world phones. Okay, cool. Is there anything else that's different about the 5C? I mean, other than the case, the pretty cases? I don't think there's anything else that that really makes it stand out. Now, there was one thing. The they I- do, it does have a faster chip. Oh, faster processor. Yep, that's right. Um, but it's got the same same camera, same display. Everything's pretty much the same. Of course, it comes with uh, iOS 7, the new version of the Apple uh, iPhone iOS. Um, oh, and it does come with the 60, no, that's the, oh, that's the 5S. I don't know oh, if the 5 sorry. did this or not, but the 5C does the, where it takes uh, still photos while you're recording video. Oh, okay. That was something that the 5 did, yeah. That will with 7, it's going to have that. So while you're taking a video, you can pick, tap a button and it'll take a uh, still shot, which is kind of nice. I like that It's a cool feature. Ours will not do that, the 4S's. Yeah. So... But other than that, that's pretty much the 5C. It's pretty. It's got a lot of colors. They did do something kind of silly fun. The wallpaper that the phone comes with by default matches the case. So if you get a green case, it's going to have a green wallpaper. Yeah, that's cute. Nothing really spectacular about that. Now, the big news, of course, was the 5S. The 5S is the latest and greatest version of the iPhone 5. And... They have it in three colors this year, uh, white, or what's it called? Not white. It's, no. It's called something else. It's um, silver, gold, silver. and space gray. And space gray. So it used to, you, what we used to call black. <laughs> it apparently <laughs> is not dark enough to call black anymore, um, which that makes sense because the, the iPhone 5 had a lot of issues with scratching on the black one. Really? Yeah, because to adenize the metal, it... it Black is one of the hardest colors to do. Interesting. Um, you know, the, the silver one, all they're doing is polishing it, basically, and uh, pr- putting a protective coat on it. Well, I noticed for the silver and gold ones, they both essentially look like white iPhones. Yes, they have white they faces. they just have, you know, silver or gold, like, detailing, yeah. and then, like, that patch on the back. Yeah, and, and there's a, on the iPhone 5 series, the 5S, um, there's a little bit of glass at the top and the bottom. The whole back is all metal otherwise. And uh, yeah, on the silver and the, the gold one, they are just a little bit of white. Which I really like that. Yeah, it does. It looks nice. Uh, I was surprised in the rumors leading up to the gold iPhone, <laughs> there were a lot of really tacky looking uh, mock-ups of it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, and like lots of people predicting like this is <laughs> only a phone for Snooky. And, you know, like. <laughs> yes. Um, but but it, it, it does look, it, it is more of a champagne color. It's not so much a gold color, but they're calling it gold. So um, the other big thing was the fingerprint scanner. Yes. So now uh, where the home button is, uh, there is a, t- they're calling it touch ID. 
and it will detect your fingerprint where the home button normally is. So when you scan or when you open your phone, it will detect your fingerprint and detect your identity. And it can do up to 10 fingers, which is good because that's how many we have. <laughs> and But you can also, like, if I wanted Amber to be able to open my iPhone, I could let her scan her thumb and then she could use it to log in. And the the reason they said why is because most people who have iPhones don't have passcodes. I'm one of those people. <laughs> Me I, too. <laughs> I just don't I, I don't want to deal with it every time I open my iPhone to enter a passcode. So and we it's talk terrible advice. You shouldn't tell your listeners. It is that. really don't listen. You should have a passcode. You should have a complex passcode on your iPhone <laughs> because if you lose it. That makes sure that you're you're more likely to get it back if you have a good passcode on your on your phone. Now, personally, and we were talking about this yesterday, that if I lose my iPhone, I'm going to iCloud.com or I'm grabbing someone else's iPhone and going to where's my iPhone and I'm locking my phone and I'm putting a message on it right away instantly. Which we've both done a yeah, couple of we've times. Both done it. Not because it was gone forever, but we just weren't sure where it was at the moment, yeah. and we just did it. And we've talked about it on the show. Um, we talked about it on the podcast, and we talked about it on our Morning Edition segment. If you have an iPhone, make sure that you have Where's My iPhone set up, because that is the fastest way to make sure that you're going to get your iPhone back. Mm -hmm. Because you can track it geographically where it's at. You can send a message to it. And if you got a good person, they're going to get it back to you. If you have a bad person, well, you can give that information to the cops. So... Oh. And at least your information is protected in the meantime. Exactly, yeah. And if you have to, you can completely wipe it out. So if you have stuff on your iPhone that you don't want other people to get into, then you can lock it up and, and completely wipe it out, and then it's gone. So with this uh, this uh, Sense ID, or no, that's, that's not what it's called. It's called the uh, Touch ID. Uh, what it'll do is you'll create you'll still create a passcode, but you can enter a really super complicated password that you don't have to remember all the time because it'll authenticate you with your fingerprint. So you'll unlock it with your thumbprint or your fingerprint, and you can also use it for purchases. So like if you wanna buy something on the App Store or in iTunes, uh, you can just use your fingerprint to identify it. Which it's, you know, everybody started talking about, oh, it's gonna be like those sci-fi movies where they cut their finger off. <laughs> Fortunately, there is a little bit I, I've heard, and I haven't been able to verify this, so I shouldn't say it on the show, but I'm going to say it anyways. I've heard that it actually will detect your pulse, too. Um, so you can't use a dead finger. Right. So don't cut people's fingers off, people, you know? I don't it, think there's going to be a rash of, like, lost digits or anything. <laughs> there was after the iPad came out. You remember that story? Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> oh that was terrible. It's horrible. Uh, just look up lost finger iPad. I'm not even going to talk about no, it on the show. No, don't look it up. It was, you don't need to. It was horrible. You don't need to see that. There was a mishap with a bag at an Apple store. Um, but anyway, so y there's no need to cut people's fingers off because it. I believe it's going to detect that. Uh, there's a pulse, which would be really cool if they could incorporate with some health apps uh, where it could actually read the the, the pulse for that. Because right now I have one health app where I can hold my finger over the camera and the flash. Interesting. And it detects my pulse. And it's it's accurate. Oh, I mean, I don't know to the precision of accuracy, but it's when I've checked it with my finger on my jugular, you know, it's it's been really accurate. So if they could do better, that'd be cool. Um, of course, it's got LTE, just like the iPhone 5 did. Um, and it does have that faster processor, the A7. Mm -hmm. One thing that's neat about this, and this is a little bit geeky, um, but it, it really affects everybody, is it has a new chip in addition to the A7 chip called the M7. And what it does is this chip, all it does is monitors the uh, motion of the phone. Mm -hmm. So if it's moving, if you're you're turning it or spinning it, the stuff that the gyroscope, the compass, and the accelerometer do right now, so that it can monitor those changes without activating the main chip. So it's gonna save a lot on battery life mm. because you don't have to activate the main chip for that, and it'll, be, it'll help a lot with that. Um, what's really cool, though, is that this will open the, the door for a lot of features that the iPhone doesn't have right now, so developers could use it to track like a pedometer, stuff that it can do right now, but like for instance, when I use my iPhone 4S for a pedometer, it burns up the battery. Mm -hmm. And by having this M7, it's gonna really save on battery life and make it a lot more functional. I'm excited about that feature. Yeah. And they're saying that this will open the door for 
what I've been begging for the past three years for, which is the iWatch. Uh, it'll be able to communicate with the iWatch or some other peripheral devices like the Nike Fuel Band or the Jawbone Up um, a little bit more effectively and, and safe or fast and save on battery. So uh, other than that, what it does have a, a new camera. I like the camera. I like what the improvements it? to the camera. Um, it's got the lower aperture. Um, and can and I am not a camera nerd. You're a little bit more than I am. Can you d- explain that? Well, on a on a. What does that mean? I mean, I'm I'm not like super knowledgeable about it, but um, okay. I took a photography class one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no. You're an expert compared to me because I've never <laughs> taken a photography class. Uh, aperture on like a normal camera, like a regular plain old camera, right? Um, like a snap, right? Uh, yeah. Um, Point and shoot. It basically takes longer for the shutter to close, like okay. the lower you have the aperture set. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, on a traditional camera, you have to hold it still a lot longer. Right. Um, but it takes in more light as it's, okay. as it's taking the picture. And so um, if you had, you know, a traditional camera, you know, from like 20 years ago or whatever, set on a really low aperture, you might hold it there for 30 seconds, hold it still. Right. But then, um, you know, it could be pitch black outside and you could actually get, get a, a shot. Lot. A good shot, yeah. Mm-hmm. And this one has it, the the iPhone five had a two point two aperture, or two point four, and this one right. has two point two. Right. I, I'm not sure how much of a difference that'll make. And I'm, I, well, it's a fifteen percent larger image sensor, also. Right. Um, I, on this, I I, I, so I had it, kind of heard that that somebody had kind of predicted that, but no real leaks about it. Yeah, I actually found it just on their website just now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all together with the increase of the image sensor and the larger aperture, mm-hmm. it, it, it's supposed to increase the light sensitivity by 33%. And they were showing some pictures. Of course, the pictures at the Apple announcements are always amazingly gorgeous <laughs> in the best possible setting you could right. ever have. But they do actually take them with the iPhone, unlike some companies like Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> did you remember that? Did you hear about that? No. Nokia did this big press announcement uh, a few months ago where they showed these amazing pictures, and it was all fake. Oh, it wasn't their actual camera. It wasn't that the, so the smartphone. Wrong. Yeah, it was Why? Bad. Why do that sort of thing? I mean, it the was, bad press afterwards is it not was worth bad. it. So. Well, I tell you what my favorite things about the new camera yes. are. Um, the true tone flash. Yes. I really like that. I don't know how good, like how I'm excited awesome about it's going to be or not, but it sounds amazing. Like other than just having that plain white LED, right. you know. That and, look like everyone's a ghost, mm-hmm. no and matter what lighting is. the fact that it's going to kind of control itself. Like I don't have to determine like yeah. what the appropriate amount of amber light is in the situation. I so, like that. So to explain, uh, the, the iPhone 5S has two LED flashes on it. One is white and one is amber. And it adjusts according to the light in the room. So like in this room, there's a lot of yellow light in, in here. So that can make it look off if you just do a bright flash. And it does more like a sunshine tone to it. Mm-hmm. So it automatically adjusts to what the temperature of the color is in the the room or the area where you're taking it. And then it's supposed to give the final photograph like more true colors yeah. to real life, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. And I also like um, that they're going to have that uh, burst mode. Yes. Where it'll take a whole Finally. bunch of photos. Oh. Which I have that on an app that I use. Yeah. Um, but having anytime they can add it built in, it's always better. Mm-hmm. I remember there was one time uh, we were at Disney on a um, Thunder Mountain. And you and Zoe were coming around the bend and I got like 80 pictures of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I did a stop motion thing with it. But, uh, but yeah, so it, it, this does what, 10 photos? I think so. And what's really cool is it automatically detects which one's the best or which one it thinks are, is the best. Mm-hmm. And it's going to give you the one that it, that it thinks is. But you can go and pick a different one if you don't like it. Right. So and that, that was really nice because, again, with the app that I used, I got a, yeah, I got a burst of, of 80 pictures, but I didn't know which one was the great one of Zoe and, and Amber smiling at me you know, as they were whisking past in the train. <laughs> I had to go through each of those pictures individually. Right. But this picks uh, based on the, uh, the frame of the picture mm-hmm. and based on how well focused it is. So it, it's really nice. Um, now, what did you think about the slow-mo video? I'm kind of geeking out on that. Really? I like that. Um, it was something that uh, Android, I think that Android already has it. This is why I need Tom here because <laughs> to I'm check. sorry, I have no um, information on that. I know that there's apps that do it, uh, that Android is capable most 
of the high-end Android phones are capable of doing it. Uh, but I really do like that it's built in uh, just for fun. It's just a fun kind of... Uh, it's probably not going to get used that much. Do you think you'll ever use it? No, I think I think <laughs> Zoe will use it. <laughs> yes. I think she'll yeah. be pretty excited about it. So we've been talking about... Me and Amber have been talking for the longest time about uh, starting Zoe with her own YouTube account. Which is probably scary for most people, but Zoe takes your phone all the time and does these videos where mm-hmm. she talks to the camera, like uh, the TV show Good Luck Charlie, um, if you're familiar with that on the Disney Channel. <laughs> or like so. occasionally she'll take my phone and like take a video of me in the house yes. or something. Now it'll be like, or here, lizards. mommy, this is you in slow mo bending mm-hmm. over to pick up this toy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> like thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be a while before we let her have that YouTube account, but. Uh, Maybe if we send them all to private. <laughs> <laughs> so, was there anything else about the iPhone 5S that you were you were impressed with? Anything that caught your attention? Um, I I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of things that I like about um, the new um, operating system. Operating system, yeah. yeah. Now, but been, they not you know they're not connected to the the phone itself. Yeah, I've been playing with iOS 7 for about a week or two uh, as a developer. And I am really impressed. Um, there's been a couple of bugs, but I think that those are all related to it being the the beta. Um, the new, the uh, general, the gold master uh, is out for developers. Um, so if you are a developer and you're listening, you can get it right now. It's the final build before the official version comes out, which comes out on the 18th, right? iOS 7, I'm, I'm 98% certain, comes out on the, ni- on the 18th. Um, the iPhone 5S and the 5C are for sale on the 20th. Uh, iPhone 5C pre-order started on the 13th. Um, and you can still pre-order them now. They're still available. Um, and I think at every where you can get them, Sprint. Uh, Walmart is doing pre-sales, uh, which is new this year. Yeah, you know, I heard that um, Walmart actually has managed to they change did. the prices. They, they did. That they've lowered their prices uh, you know, Apple's been not by much. Not by much. It's like twenty dollars, yeah. enough to make a significant difference. Um, Apple has been really strong arming the retailers for the longest time. Anybody who's able to get the Apple any Apple products, Apple sets the price. Nobody else is allowed to change it. And legally, you can't actually say that, but you can legally have a minimum advertised price. So the way that some retailers have gotten around that is they say oh well we, if you buy an iphone we'll include a 20 dollar gift card to our store and you can use it on the same purchase they don't tell you that but you can um so the, you're still saving 20 dollars or whatever but somehow walmart they had a press release that they are selling the iphone 5c for 20 dollars less mm-hmm. and the iphone 5s for 10 dollars less right and they're the only place in town any town <laughs> that you can do that so, not sure what happened there, but they were able to negotiate something, mm-hmm. or they just, or just taking told them to stick it. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> one of the ways that that Apple controls that is they give the retailers a very small margin to work with. Right. So if you cut yourself any lower, well, you you might not be making any money. So that is one interesting thing that's happened. Um, but what was interesting too. This was the first year in a while, uh, I think, since the iPhone four, where there was no pre sales on the, the the flagship model. You could not pre, pre-purchase the iPhone 5S. You can do the 5C, but right. not the 5S. If you that want the 5S. That yesterday, right? Um, yeah, it's our, uh, Friday the 13th, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can, you can pre-purchase that one uh, online, or I think you can in the stores as well. Um, but the 5S, if you want it, you gotta go camping. You gotta go get in line. Cause, and there's already people here in Jacksonville lined up at the town center uh, waiting. No way, yes, really? yes. They were reporting it on the news on the local TV How show. How long until it goes on sale? Uh, they they started actually the day of the announcement. There were already people there at, at the app. Yep. How long are they going to be there? Yeah, uh, they're going to be there until the twentieth. Oh my gosh! People are, and I think that's why. I think because last year there wasn't anybody camping out in most of the the outlier stores. There were still like the New York, you know, the 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 big store. So less free press. Yeah, that's what it was. I mean, because everybody does a story about the people lined up around the block, you know, but there it just wasn't happening. So I think there was so much there was so much product this time that they had to do something to make a bit a little bit more press to drive more people out of the store. So 
They're well, gonna I don't have mind. Their... I enjoy sitting at home and like mocking people, <laughs> yeah. you know, on the on the news. <laughs> but we are we are getting one, right? We're yes. getting the five S. Um, mm-hmm. Probably both of us, but at least yeah. one of us is going to get one. Um, so, well, you'll probably get one, and yeah. then I'll probably have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there was one other thing. The just like the iPhone five C, there is a case for the iPhone five S that Apple's doing. Yeah, it looks kind of nice. Yeah, it's what like leather. And it, then on the inside, it's like microfiber. Yeah. Uh, with chamfered edges in a way no other iPhone case does. <laughs> I love the way they write stuff on the Apple website. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a leather case that fits very snugly, very rounded. It's, it's with a soft microfiber lining that helps protect the finish of your iPhone. <laughs> um, it's really nice. And there's six different colors. Uh, so even though it's leather, it's, uh, they, they're very nice. But those colors are much more muted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> than the bright colors of the 5C. Yeah, that's much nicer. Or, or its I, cases. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get one, though. I don't think I'm going to get one of their cases. Really? Yeah, I really am in love with that one that I tried, that I did the review on, the uh, oh. the Avivo style. Mm-hmm. That thing was gorgeous, and it'll work with the iPhone 5S. So I, I think I, I'd like to get one of the Apple ones. Yeah, maybe. I yeah. like them. It, it's okay. All right, so that's pretty much all the news from Apple. Uh, there were no big surprises. There was no one more thing. Uh, they didn't bring out the Apple TV. They didn't bring out the iWatch. You know, it was kind of sad. They did have Elvis Costello play for a really long time. Yeah. And he made a lot of political statements, too. Like, it was yeah. kind of weird. It was interesting. Um, you know, Apple always does some big star at the end, you know, to wrap up, you know, at the end. Um, but sometimes what happens is after the guy performs, it was Steve usually came back out and would, you know, mention one more thing. Right. Um, Which a lot of people were expecting to be the watch. We were right? hoping uh, the, the watch or the TV, like mm-hmm. they're still out there in, in the somewheresville, you know, in, in at Apple. But and it was funny because as it was going on, you know, bloggers who were live blogging from the event were saying, this is the shortest thing I've ever been to. Yeah. You know, it was the first so time we, an Apple event was an hour long. Right. So it, that's it really it. <laughs> made people think like something was going to happen oh, afterwards yeah. and then nothing. Nothing. It was really sad. Especially since the week before Samsung announced the, the Samsung smartwatch, which... Uh, I know I'm going to get attacked by the Samsung lovers <laughs> and Samsung's a great company. It, they make great products. The Samsung watch is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. It's a big old Franken clunk of metal. Wow. It's, I would never put that on my wrist. It just, no. I it's, haven't seen a picture of it or anything. It's not pretty. I don't like it at all, but it works with Android too. And uh, you know, you guys know I'm a, I'm an iOS fanboy, so I wouldn't buy it anyways, but that was pretty much it. That's all that they had. Uh, Elvis played for a while and then that was it. Well, you know what? One more thing okay. um, about your one more thing <laughs> um, about the iPhone, uh, like 5C and 5S. I mm-hmm. was on the Sprint website the other day. Yeah. And they have this promo going on right now where if you bring your number from another carrier, oh. that they'll give you a hundred dollar credit, which actually makes the iPhone 5C, the, the base model, wow. free. That's cool. Um, and wow. it makes the uh, 32 gig. But you have to be switching dollars. to Sprint. Yeah. Okay. So like we wouldn't be eligible. Anybody right, who's already a Sprint, Sprint person wouldn't be eligible. But uh-huh. but I thought that was very interesting because I looked on the website and I, I was seeing these prices and I was thinking, that can't be right. That <laughs> one's not supposed to be free. What? <laughs> but it, it's well, a good deal. Yeah. Now, uh, this happened since our last episode too. But also Apple opened up a uh, uh, replacement plan. Or not replacement. They, they'll buy back. A oh, buyback uh-huh. program, um, and it's roughly the same as like Gazelle or uh, or one of those sites where you can buy them from. It might be a little bit less, um, and Sprint's doing that too with a buyback program. Um, but that's, that's something the new. The prices that you get for the Sprint one's terrible though. Oh really? In comparison, yeah. So, but Apple's is pretty low. It's it's a it's a good bit lower than most of them, but it's a guaranteed sale. You know, depending on I don't think they're buying back broken ones, um, or if they do, it's really low. I haven't I haven't completely checked it out, but that was something new that Apple hadn't done before, and I think that the market is growing so much for used iPhones. Mm-hmm. That was the only thing that they had on their store that they didn't have used was the iPhones. I mean, you could get used Macs, refurbished uh, iPod touches and iPads, but uh, no iPhones refurbished. So that uh, it's kind of neat that they started that. All right, so enough talking about Apple. I'm sure some of our listeners have already said, especially Tom, if he's listening, he's like, oh, 
Come on, Ray, stop talking about iPhone. <laughs> we had a question uh, that we wanted to answer, and it was, hey, Ray and Tom, or Ray and Amber in this case, I have been wondering about security questions. Lately, I've read in the news about security questions being the way that people are hacking into accounts. And it seems like a lot of that information is relatively easy to find. What should I do when a company forces me to enter a security question that is available online? So we were actually talking about this last night. Um, you know, a, a while back, um, Matt Hahn, Matt Hahn, I just completely got his name wrong, um, a reporter for, I believe, Gizmodo, uh, was hacked. And the way they did it is through what's called social engineering. They didn't you know, like you know hack into his account by some brute force method and guess his passwords. They just called up Apple and asked him to reset the password and they confirmed information. They pretended to be him and they confirmed it with other people. And it was really through those security questions that they were able to do it. The thing is, nowadays, uh, you know, Amber, what's your mother's maiden name? Heart. Exactly. Now everyone knows. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't work anymore. You know, it used to be at the bank you had to give your mother's maiden name because mm -hmm. nobody knew it. You know, it wasn't publicly available. But that information is really super easy now. Mm -hmm. It's really super easy to find out. Um, for instance, some security questions that I know that I've been asked, uh, who was the best man at your wedding? Uh, where did you honeymoon? Um, what was your first car? What's your favorite color? All these questions the are really... The street that you grew up on. The street you grew up on. That's a popular one. Mm -hmm. Your first elementary school. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, who was uh, your favorite teacher? Mm -hmm. I'm like, most of those, you could really... It wouldn't take you that long on Facebook or Twitter if you're even an average person sharing information to find out a lot of that stuff. And that is a huge security risk for people that people can get into your bank account, get into your email account. And we've talked about that on the show before. Once you get access to one, you have access to everything. Because if you can get into them, usually with like your email account, your main email account is your key to everything because they can you can reset your password that way. So what you want to do, when you do that, there's a couple of different things you can do. Usually, you don't have to answer the question logically. So if they ask you, what's... What was your first car? Answer green. No one's going to guess that. It's right. impossible. Um, what I do is I answer the question with some a really sarcastic remark like, really, does anyone at your business not know about security? And that's my answer. So when someone asks me that, and the, what, what's your answer to your security question? It's really, does no one at your business know about <laughs> security? And I've gotten a, a couple of laughs sometimes from people. But uh, you can you can answer them almost always. You can answer them with pretty much anything. Right. I like, you know, things like Sky Fox Couch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just things that make no just sense. Something completely random mm -hmm. and has nothing to do with the question. And that's the biggest thing. Make sure it has nothing to do with the question. Because if you answer it correctly, someone else can figure it out and answer it correctly. And often those security questions are used by people. Um, sometimes they're automated and you have to answer them exactly the way that they were entered. But usually it's so that a customer service rep can verify that you are who you say you are. And the more random you get, the the harder it is for somebody to socially engineer that hack. Um, and use LastPass or, or Dashlane. Keep track of that information in a secure database like those so that when you do get asked that question, like, I don't remember what I give people for security questions because I always use something random. Mm -hmm. I can pull up last pass and go, oh, it's this, blah, 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 blah. Right. And they go, oh, okay, cool. So essentially, people should be treating these security questions as additional passwords. Right, exactly. And you should make them as secure as your real passwords and keep them secure in LastPass. And in LastPass and Dashlane both, there's a section in every password profile where you can put notes. And those notes are just as secure as your password. It's just as encrypted. So you can put whatever you need to in there. Because like me and Amber, we both use our own domain names for all of our email addresses. So anything, like if we sign up for a survey, we'll put so-and-so survey at rayhollister.com. And all of it goes to our main email address. It's a kind of additional layer of protection. But 
we got to keep track of what email address did we give that person. So we put that in the notes. And you can do that. You can write anything you want to in those notes. So that's where you can keep track of it. So that is all the questions that we got answered. Um, thank you for your questions. Keep them coming. Next week, uh, Tom will be back, hopefully. Uh, hopefully he's not going to die. <laughs> so <laughs> We've all been through our little batch of illness over the past few weeks. So yeah. hopefully we'll all be better. But we've got a big show coming up for you. we got a bunch of questions. Uh, so definitely tune in next week. Um, and if you have questions, keep them coming. Send them to us. Send them to call us at our toll-free number. It's one 972 9868 Or you can always send us an email at questions at deemable.com. And be sure to subscribe to the show. Go to iTunes, search for Deemable Tech, or point your f- favorite podcast app to dmbl.co slash pod. Our producer is Sean Birch. Thanks to Robert Snyder for video production assistance. I'm Ray Hollister. And I'm Amber Hollister. And this is Deemable Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. 